Patrick here. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming by. We have a wonderful new painting. We're doing a sailboat. This is the Extreme Beginner Series. So we're going to enjoy the process of learning about a couple different things. Today we're going to learn in this tutorial how to get a really good, smooth, beautiful wash on the whole paper from the top sky area here all the way down to the uh, water areas down here at the very, very bottom of the paper. Once we have that in, we let it dry 100%, and then we start going in and getting our darks. We're working from a photograph, so you won't have to worry. We're going to actually have this photograph that we're using right here as our guide. But for the most part, we're really just trying to get down the basic uh, concept and idea of getting that first beautiful wash on, letting it dry 100%, and then getting in our darks over here and over here where the trees are and over here, and as well as the distant shorelines back here behind the sail. And then after that, we also work on uh, getting our sail um, painted in with a little bit of a more warmer color, like a, like a, a little bit of a golden orange color. So we make a nice uh, differentiation between the sky blue with this a little bit of an orange and warmer color um, sail. We do some quick figures here. You'll see how to do those. We'll show you how to do that. Real simple figures in the boat. And we did some boat with some reflections in the water. We explain how you get some really nice crisscross strokes to get some of that water uh, feel for the choppiness of the water here, just like in the picture. And uh, so we'll do all this and more on this tutorial. I'm glad you're here. Come on uh, uh, and uh, settle down and we'll, we'll, get, uh, we'll get started. We'll do the pencil drawing first, of course, and then we'll get right into the washes and doing the first glazing and then everything after that. Okay, so we'll be right back and we'll get started. Okay, welcome everyone. It's Chris Petrie. We just uh, saw the finished painting, so now we're going to get started and just kind of go through the uh, progressions of um, how we're going to get to our sailboat uh, uh, scene here and uh, get our sketch in and then our uh, contour drawing and then, of course, our paints. So the first thing we'll do is we have the, um, the photograph here in the upper right-hand side. So that's going to be our, our photograph we're going to work from. So right away, I kind of see that the um, the distant shoreline uh, and water line is about two thirds, a little more than a half actually, uh, above the above the halfway point. So if we divide our paper in half, in a sense, it's a little bit above halfway. So maybe about here. So what I'll do is I'll just make a uh, light line across the paper. You can use a ruler if you'd like to, just to get a more even line if, if you feel that's something you'd like to do. Um, I'll lift up my phone and just get the rest of the line there. Okay. And we have that line in. That's good. Now we're going to look at the sailboat and we're going to say halfway is about here so the sailboat is the sail of the sailboat the very left hand side of the sailboat is actually about over here so it's not quite halfway it's a little bit over from the center point of the paper the halfway point of the paper so we'll just do this we'll get our halfway point here on our paper and we'll just go over a little bit and that should be fine and then we'll just I'll put my pointer index finger here, make a little mark and say, okay, that's where our sail is going to be. Then I'll take a ruler and uh, before I put my straight uh, line for the mast of the sailboat, I just want to kind of see where the sailboat is and that's about a third of the way, one third, two thirds, it's about a third of the way up. So here is about where the sailboat is, where the bottom of the sailboat rests upon the water here. So I'm going to do that. And the sailboat's right about here. And I'm going to go like this. Like so. Like that. Now I'm going to go in and, and put in the uh, mast for the sail. Quite close to the uh, bow of the boat, the front of the boat. And it's a little bit on an angle, like a little bit of an angle. So if this is straight, it's on a little bit of an angle this way, just a tiny bit. 
and then it comes down. It's a little bit thick. We'll paint this in though. But we just kind of want to get maybe a little bit of a thicker paint line, pencil line, <clears throat> to remember we're going to make this a little thicker when we do our paint, paint, paint stroke on our paper. And then we're going to do the sail here. Now the sail, I'm going to shift this over this way so that I have room to... Um, so sometimes you have to move things around on your art table, like I moved my water bucket away from me so I can comfortably put my arm here. My water bucket would be in the way if I was trying to draw this right now. So I moved my water bucket over away from my table for right now. And then we're just going to have the, uh, the sail. The sail is going to go qu quite a bit high here. And it kind of just comes down, touches along here, snugs along that uh, mast, and then we have the uh, boom going across, like so. And this boom is about not quite to the end of the stern of the boat, the rear of the boat. So I'm going to take this and make another pencil line like that. And then if I go a little bit too far, I just do a little bit of lifting up of the pencil line there, like so. And then this is the boom that goes across here. And then we're going to have this sail, and it's going to come, you can, you can do this many ways. There's um, flexible um, molded, let's try one of those, let me see if I can find mine. Okay, right now I cannot find my flexible flexible ruler. It's basically a ruler that you can actually mold. You've probably seen those, some of you, but I can take this ruler here like this and kind of bend it this way. So I'm going to do that, actually. I'm going to do it by hand, actually. Let me do it by hand. It's kind of like a soft radius. It's not really too... So I'm just going to try to go down like that with a really super light sketch first and I think that looks pretty good and I'll just leave it like that that's fine so you can do this you can take a, a flexible this is a plastic ruler so you could use this too and kind of uh, get a get a, a nice kind of radius line like this and then again they have these um, flexible rulers that are you can move them and they stay in the position of like um, a, a um, curved line they stay in that position like you don't have to hold it it just molds to you know you can mold it around and, and make it into a, a radius but I don't see it right now so I'm just gonna and then there's a few more straight lines up here where the rigging is where the, the uh, lines are there's some rigging lines that go up to keep the everything stabilized so there's some more of those here. So we'll just get a few of those in. And then we'll do a couple figures here on the boat. So we have the top of the boat here. Like so. There's some trim on the boat. Interesting trim. And then we have a person here. And they're, they're like so. They're on the boat this way. And then there's another person here. I'm just making the basic shapes of a head and shoulders. And then there's another person back here. Fantastic. So we have some figures in our boat. I'll go over with a darker pencil line now. Once we get our... Um, Again, we're doing a light sketch first, so we have our sailboat in there now, and our um, figures in the sailboat. 
Then we're going to actually do some light preliminary sketches over here where there's some trees coming down over here and a distant shoreline. So we're going to have some trees over here, a little bit of a mountainous area here that goes down like so into the water. And then there's some more distant hills over here. So there's some quite a bit of coastal area like this. And we'll leave some of that open, open sea. And then there's some more, I'll just do this over here. There's some more trees over here and distant shoreline there. And then there's some more distant hills there. So that looks pretty good. We have some open sea over here, distant hills over here. These are a little closer. So we have these here and then maybe uh, there's some more trees over here so I'm doing some light sketching here of the trees like so so I'm just getting in some trees some tree shapes some tree trunks just light sketching I think you can see that just very very light sketching and then I'll go over actually with darker pencil line now so you can see that I did my first pencil sketch. This way I get everything on the paper right where it needs to be. And then once I have the sailboat first, and then the distant uh, shoreline over here, and then this is a little bit in the middle distance here. This is a little bit closer, this shoreline over here, with trees and so forth. That is gonna look fantastic. So now I'll start out with the sailboat. So I'll shift this over here. And since we already have our, since we already ha have our light pencil lines on this, now we're just going with our darker pencil lines. So you can kind of see the drawing, like this, and then we have the mast over here. So I'm trying to keep that that mast there. The rigging lines are fine. And then we have the sailboat here, wooden sailboat, like so. And then the figures, so the figures are here in the boat. Okay, then we're going to do the distant shoreline here. You can kind of see, I'm just getting those pencil lines in, a little bit darker pencil lines, so you can kind of get the feel for the drawing. And then I'll sh shift this over here, the picture, the uh, photograph with my phone. And we're just going to go straight across here and get in the shoreline or this on this side, on the left side, like so. I'm going to get these distant hills and shoreline over here. And then our trees. We'll do these very loosely, these trees over here, but I'll get them I'll get them in like that. Like so. And I think that looks pretty good. And that's about it. We have it pretty much. So our pencil drawing is now complete. We did our again our first light sketch to get everything where we want it to be. We did our hash marks first to get the distant shoreline and ocean, the horizon line of the ocean. Then we looked at the sailboat and said the sailboat's about a third of the way up from the bottom. So we got our bottom of sailboat, which is about a third of the way on this picture. Maybe a little bit less, maybe a quarter if we're going half, quarter, half, three quarters full. So you can kind of Judge your paper according to either thirds or halves or quarters. So, but this is a nice place for the sailboat in the bottom uh, corner of this painting here. So that is fine. And uh, we're going to start painting in just a second. So let's take a break and then we're just going to 
get our brushes here. So I'm going to have my Simply Simmons number six, and this is an Extreme Beginners series painting. So we're going to use our uh, Simply Simmons number six brush. We have some Princeton brushes also, some Princeton um, synthetic brushes that you get in a set, maybe five or six in a, in, a, in a set. I have three of them here, a round brush, a square brush, two square brushes, and a round brush here. Then we have this brush comes with the Prang Oval 16 set that everyone is used to, that we're using, the Prang Oval 16 semi-moist watercolor paint set. This comes with that, so we have this brush, and then, again, the Simply Simmons, and there's a few other, this is another uh, Princeton round brush that we have that's got a little more uh, uh, synthetic hair here, and it's pretty got a pretty good uh, amount of hair, so this might be a little bit... Uh, have a little more uh, ability to have some extra water and, and wash. Uh, you know, we could use this for like larger washes of color if we want. But I think we can get everything with these these brushes right here. So we we'll use these brushes, and again, the Prang Oval 16 set is over here. And we'll just spritz some water on here before we paint. So I use a spritzer bottle by Holbein. They make these spritzer bottles; they're fantastic. You can get them online. Um, they're inexpensive. And they're really great for moistening up your colors, and that's all we need. And then we're actually pretty much uh, all ready to go. So let's come back in a minute or two, and we'll start uh, putting in our colors for this beautiful sailboat painting. Okay, be right back. All right, we're back. We're going to get started again. I just uh, realized I, I did find that um, flexible uh, uh ruler. It's a Statler ruler. So if you can imagine, this is it here. It's a Statler ruler. I, maybe I can zoom in on it and it gives you the uh, part number of it. Let's see if I can zoom in here. There we go. So this is the Statler ruler um, that I was telling you about. It's flexible like this. And then we'll zoom back out. You can kind of see how you can mold it like so, and it stays in place. You can tape it down. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll tape one end down to the paper, and then I can take it and I can mold it to whatever curve I want. So if you need a special curve, we could have used it here, taped it down, and got this curve without too much of a problem. If you need, if you need to get a really nice curve and you don't want to do it freehand or do it with just, you know, without something to help you, this is a great ruler to have. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you want to invest in it right now, but it is something you can kind of jot down in your notes. This uh, Statler flexible ruler. Uh, maybe in the future you're going to want to purchase this if you really find that you're really doing a lot of work and you're, you're um, with curves and things like that, and you feel like you might need something like this to help you to get some really nice curves and things like that. This really works great. I used to use this at work when I used to have to do um, drawings of buildings that had curves and uh, radiuses. So if I was doing a um, drawing on some graph paper, I could use this to get curves uh, to do to do um, architectural drawings on graph paper. So these are really fantastic and they have all the measurements too, so you can use it as a measuring tool as well. So you have inches on one side and then centimeters and millimeters on the other. So this really works out fantastic. I uh, hope you'll try it out if you think you might need it to um, get some great looking curves in your pencil drawings. So um, I took, this is the this is the painting, uh, the photograph I should say. So at this point, since we're painting, I don't want to have my phone getting paint on there and so forth, so I'm going to move this out of the way for right now, but you can kind of see what what the general idea is of, of the actual photograph. It's really nice. It's got some darks here where the trees are, so we have some really, really dark darks there. And then the rest is kind of medium tones. And then there's some really, really dark darks for the clothing of the figures in the sailboat. And then also maybe the the boom and the um, the boom and the um, the uh, mast of the sailboat is dark too. So there are some dark darks in there. So those dark darks again would be the trees in the distance on these distant hills here, and this tree, these trees in this distant uh, 
shoreline here, medium to distant shoreline there, and as well as the far distant shorelines. And then again, the figures, the clothing and the hair and the figures are sort of pretty much a dark dark there. And then other than that, everything else is sort of medium tones, medium tonal values. So we have some spots of darks, some really dark darks here and there, but the predominant uh, look of the painting is more of medium tonal values, kind of like that middle middle tonal values of the entire sky and water. So let's go for that. Let's let's keep that in mind as we go. So we'll do this as a glazing technique painting because to try to do these darker darks on the trees here and so forth and on these distant shorelines and then paint around them with wash, with wet washes, that would be more difficult. So let's just go in and get a nice beautiful wash across the whole painting and then just go in and do our darks on top of that after it dries 100%. <laughs> you always hear me say that. If you're doing the glazing technique and you're doing a first wash, a lighter or middle tonal value wash, definitely have to let that dry, right? You have to let that dry 100% and then you go over the top with the darks. So let's do that. And we can make note that we are going to change uh, some of the washes as we do this first wash because the sail is a little bit different color and a little lighter than some of the water and some of the sky. So, but it is similar in tonal values. So let's see what we can come up with here. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to set this across from me on my art table so I can see that and refer back to it as I'm painting. And I think I'll use my square brush here to get my first wash on. I think this, that would be fine. So I'm going to have my water bucket, fresh clean water. And let's just see if I can get some really good washes on here. So I'm going to take some fresh clean water and just put some fresh clean water here and there on the canvas, on the paper I should say. More up on the top area here. And then I'll just here and there add some really beautiful fresh clean water some on the sail area too, and then just do the same thing right on down. You can blend it right through the sail, doesn't matter. And then just do that. We just have some fresh clean water, not everywhere, but here and there, you know, quite a bit. And we'll just mix our paint around as we go down the paper. So We'll do that. It'll give more of an interesting kind of feel to it and look. So then now we're going to go and we're going to get some blue. Sky colors, blue, purple, blue and purple there. We're going to add a little um, orange to that. Give it a little bit of a... We'll get some more straight blue over here like that. Maybe some here too. Some cerulean looking blue. Kind of get a little bit of this mixed in there. That looks like a pretty good sky wash and we can mix this right on down into the water. We're going to do the same thing for the water. So I'm going with blue here, which is kind of like a cobalt blue. This here is a cerulean blue down here. Then we take a little bit of uh, orange and just kind of mix it in a little bit to kind of just give it a little bit of a, a mellowing out of the intensity of the blue. That blue is very intense in this set here. These blues are very intense in the purple too, so we're going to get some purple in there. And I think this is pretty good. You can see I've got plenty of wash mixed up in here. And let's just start going into the paper and getting these on. Just like this. Uh, the darker wash is up top. Like this. Let the paint just do what it does, right? Let's let the water, that's why I wet the paper here and there, not everywhere, but let's let that paint do what it does. Watercolor is fantastic. It can do like most of the work for you. If you just let it do its thing, it will really help you to create beautiful paintings. So let's just see how we're doing here. Okay, so now this is, if you don't want like storm clouds and rain clouds, you can lift that up a little bit with a tissue and then go back over it again, lightly with the brush, like so. But that's all we need to do right now. Like that. 
And then what we can do as well is take a little more darker dark, like that. And let's make it darker up top here with a little bit of more orange and blue and a little bit of purple. Let's make it a little darker up here. So then we can add that little more of a little bit of a darker wash. You have time to go in and do that. Up top and then we sort of soften it out as we go down this way. And then we're going to go right in to the water below and do the same thing. Just go right across side to side like so. We're giving this really a good wash all the way across the whole paper, all the way down, right from the top to the bottom. So you have your And I add a little more mixture here, a little more blue. We'll make it a little darker maybe down here. Blue and orange, just a touch of orange, like that. There we go. So I'm basically coating the whole paper with a, a whole glazing here. And then once you get this on the paper, you have to let it go. You can't go back in and work anymore. So that's what I do. I get the whole thing covered. The whole paper is now covered with a beautiful wash of like blue, two different blues. We have the darker blue here, and then you have the um, lighter blue here, the cerulean blue like that. And you do have a little bit of time to maybe do a little bit of a darker wash up here, but the paper is starting to dry a little bit so you, we don't have that much time but you could get some this is a Fabriano paper so it gives you a little extra time if you have a little bit of a more um, quality paper you do have a little more time to to work on it and add some paint to it and, and work with uh, some additional washes on top here as we're doing other papers, other papers you'll notice you sometimes won't have the time once, once it starts to get dry a little bit and then you try to do this as like I'm adding a little bit of the darker washes up top there you can kind of see. Um, sometimes if you try to do that with maybe a more inexpensive paper um, it does tend to not give you that um, extra little bit of time to do this like what we're, we're doing right now. So I'm able to add some darks here, some darker washes I should say like this. Like that. Alright, so now we can let this dry 100% so we wouldn't do any more work now. This is it. This is all we can do right now is either use a hair dryer or uh, let it dry for about an hour until it's really completely dry. And then we can go over with our darker darks, which will be the trees and the distant shoreline, the figures and some of the details in the boat and in the sail. But other than that, this is almost done. All right, so we're going to let this dry. I'm going to let it dry naturally, I think, because I think I'm going to have uh, some coffee maybe and, and relax and sit down for a few. So maybe 15 or 20 minutes to a half an hour from now, it, it should be dry enough that we can work on it again and it might be dry enough. So we'll, we'll see. If not, we can do a little hair, dry, hair dryer to get this to dry up a little bit. Okay, and I always mention too, if, you, if this is your first time here or if you maybe haven't been on my channel a long time and this is an extreme be beginner series video, tutorial, uh, on the right-hand side down below here, there's the subscribe button. I'm hoping everyone's going to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. All it does is when you click that subscribe button, it's just the next time you open up YouTube, you'll see that my video is uh, visible for you so you know that I've created a new video. 
Um, and then you can watch it and decide if you want to paint along with us and, and join along with us here. I think that's important because if you see the videos coming into your YouTube channel whenever you open up YouTube, it'll be like a reminder like, hey, yeah, come on, let's get, let's get another painting going because we, we want to practice a lot. So I know if you're just starting out, you might not practice as much, but the more you can get some paintings in as much as possible, you're going to get better and better uh, and uh, you, your skills will get better at watercolor. So I want you to get better and, and paint better and have more success with watercolors. And that's why I just say if you're subscribing on the right-hand side, that subscribe button, you know, you will see the videos in your uh, YouTube channel when you open up YouTube the next time. So, you know, I want to see everybody following along and joining along with us. We're having a great time here. We're having fun. We're going over all the methods and techniques of watercolor. And we also have the more advanced videos you can see on this channel. And you can watch those too and join along with those as well. If you're an extreme beginner, that doesn't mean you can't try the other more advanced paintings. You can do those. You can maybe do them in a little more simpler fashion. Maybe you could do it in your own take, which is really a good thing to practice too. If you, you know, you're the artist, you can actually say, "Okay, that's a more advanced painting. I can see that they're doing there that we're doing here on our channel, but I can do that. I can take these paints and sort of get the same effects and maybe do something maybe you know a little different. I'm not using the same brushes and paints, but I'm using the prang set, and I can get some really good results." doing some of the more advanced paintings. So don't be afraid to try the advanced paintings as well. Uh, our tutorials where we do more advanced uh, um, compositions, try those too. If you're just starting out, try as much as you can, have fun. The more you're painting and drawing, the better you're going to get, the quicker you're going to get, you know, to uh, the next level and, 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 you know, have a much more fun time if you're having a lot more success at your uh, watercolors. So I'm hoping you're going to continue to join along and subscribe down below on the right-hand side. And thumbs up if you like my videos. That helps me a lot if you can thumbs up. And um, this way YouTube will know that you're really happy with my videos and they're going to send them out to more people so that we can get more people on board to paint with us. Okay. All right. I'm going to be right back. We're going to let this dry again 100%. And then we'll come back and do the dark darks in this painting. And uh, we have a little bit of a smudge there and uh, we can so all right we'll be right back all right hey we're back again here and we're going to get started our paper is nice and dry i let this dry for about 20 minutes and then i did a little bit of blow drying as well just to kind of make sure it was uh, good it's nice and dry like very very dry to the touch so um and not that much buckling either so the paper is sort of flattened out quite a bit which is good um, so let's get started. We're going to do our darks. Let's start here. I'll put my phone back down here so we can kind of see. We're going to do the trees over here. So we have the trees in this section over here in the, in the middle distant to um, uh, far distant shoreline here. And then we'll do the trees and distant shoreline back here, the uh, hills and trees and coastline back behind the sail. So let's get started on that. So over here, we're going to need some good darks. So let's go in with some burnt umber and some blue and some green. So we're going to do blue, green, blue, green, brown, and then maybe we'll add some uh, purple, some orange, Green, more green, and I think that looks pretty good. So we have some really good darks here. So what I'll do is I'll load up my Simply Simmons number six. Second thing is, first thing is I mixed out the paint, the colors you saw, burnt umber, blue, a little bit of purple, a little bit of uh, orange and orange red, and some green, the dark green here. Then what I do is, it's mostly all paint, almost no water, just a tiny bit of water. You don't see any puddles there like we did when we did our first wash. You notice there was puddles like here. You see those puddles there? When we mix this color here for our darks for the trees and the mountains, there's no puddles here. We're basically working with really, really rich paint with hardly any water. A little bit of water to get it to mix, but other than that, it shouldn't be puddly like this. It's got to be straight paint more or less. And then what we'll do is we'll take it, we'll dry off a touch of the paint with a tissue just so we don't have too much paint on the brush. 
And then we'll kind of start to do some circular motions here to get our trees, like this. And there we go, look how good that looks. So these are our trees we're doing over here. Circular motions. We don't want um, maybe a couple up tilt, up, uh, uh, up strokes like so, like that. What we don't want is to fill the whole thing all in dark and solid, because you can see in this picture there's lots of light showing through these trees. And that's the same thing we want to do. So we're going to do some fine lines like so for the tree trunks here and there, like that. And then here we have the shoreline as well. So we can fill that in with some darks. And uh, we mix it up with different colors, browns, blacks, or browns and, and reds and greens. So we'll put some reds in there, brown, some blue. Try to get a whole bunch of different colors in there to kind of make things look interesting. And there we have it. So this is the, the distant hills here. Like that. And then I dry off a little bit of the brush there and we'll do a little more like that to get the to get that interesting tree effects and then maybe some upstrokes like so. I think if you a good thing we can remember is if you for the trees and things like this over here. If you can get a mixture of like um, color, a little bit of mixture of color, we have some green, um, and mixtures of brush strokes. So we did the circular fashion first, then we did some circular strokes like this up this way to kind of bring some brush strokes up this way, and then some circular ones this way, and we left lots of, you can see we left lots of white paper in between here, which really looks good so that it's not all like filled in in one giant blotch of color and then and then we're accomplishing this look over here and then when you have that it's really a, a large um, help to make this look very similar to this so now that we have that there Maybe we make it a little square, like there's a square kind of shape there. That looks kind of good there. There's like a square shape. So you can kind of kind of shape things a little bit if you want to. This is more of a circular over here, and then darker in there, and then there's some over here, like that. And I think that looks pretty good. And don't worry about over here. We're going to lift up that tape later. And then now we're going to go in and do these distant hills. And notice that my brush is sort of dry right now. I don't, I don't want to have too much of this paint on my brush. I've done all of this work over here with the brush, doing these trees, and now I've taken a lot of that paint off the brush hairs, and now that's a perfect amount of um, paint left on the brush to do these really fine lines over here, if you can see that, right? We wouldn't want to go in with a ton of paint on these distant hills over here in the far distance, because then it would just ooze out of the brush and just make big spots of color and we wouldn't be able to control how much paint we have on the brush and how much paint we're getting onto these distant hills. I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense to you? That if you go in with a lot less paint in your brush hairs to do these distant hills now across here, that really helps things a lot. Then we'll bring this over here and then we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to get some of these trees over here, like so. I'll go in and get some more paint. And already, once I go in and get more paint, you can kind of see how much darker that gets. And that's kind of works OK, because this is very dark here. So we're going to do that. So this looks okay, that looks pretty good. And then back here, we're gonna go with a little more blue, 
So this is more of a distant color, like this. More of a blue, like that. And I rinse my brush. So I rinse the brush off, put some more water in there to lighten that up. Then I dry it off a little bit, like so, with tissue, so that my brush is not dripping with water. I'm controlling the water carefully on my brush. And this way we can get that really light distant hills like this. Does that make sense? How I'm drying off my brush? Like that? So you can get that in the distance there, it's not quite as dark as it is here. Like so. And do a little splashy maybe over there, maybe over here too. I put some splashing along the tops of the trees. You don't have to do the splashing if you don't want to. Okay, so now we're looking pretty close to what we have here in the picture. The dark darks of the trees here, the dark darks over here of the hills over here and some of the trees on the hills. And then we have sort of a uh, uh, distant hills here, a little bit lighter, N not a lot lighter, but a little bit lighter here in the very, very far distance. And that looks like we have it. So now we're going to continue by doing our figures, and we'll use these same colors for our figures. Maybe a little bit of purple in there to make it a little darker over here. And I'll dry off the brush again. I don't want too much paint, paint on there. Okay. So we have our figures. And I'll do a little bit of the top of the sailboat. And we'll get some red orange up here. Red and orange. A little bit of yellow maybe. A little bit of this orange here. A little more red. A touch of brown in there. And we'll make the, uh, the faces of the figures. Maybe a little more red in the other one here. There we go. So now we have some good flesh tones here for the heads, and then maybe there's a little bit of, we'll have a little bit of the, um, the, the figure's arm there. And that looks pretty good too. Then we're going to go with some of that orange color with some brown in there mixed and some yellow. Like so, maybe a little more orange, a little more red there. And we'll just get the color of the boat. So let's dry that off a little bit on the tissue so we don't have too much water on the hairs of the brush. And let's get our color of our wooden boat here, the beautiful wood color, the reddish blonde color wood for the boat. That's the top of the boat where the um, seats are for the The sailboat and then there's a little bit of shadowing underneath the boat here so let's just go into there and do a shadow like so and we're going to do some we're going to mix up some more blue and some cerulean blue and we're going to try to just get a little more color under here 
and just do a little bit of like that. Put a little bit of interesting color on the sailboat and underneath it just a little bit. You can kind of see that there's a little bit of a darker shadow under here like so. And then we can take that and just do some cross hatching, some X strokes like this just to get a little bit of that choppy water kind of feel. And we can just do it for this this area here where the boat is. We don't have to go doing this all, all over the rest of the painting. I don't think we need to. I think if we just do a little bit there, that might be fine. And then maybe let's use our flat brush again, our square brush. And let's just do a little bit of a... We'll try to get a little bit of a golden color in there. There's a little bit of a gold. Let's do some orange. So we're going to add some orange to the blue that we mixed. And we'll just make a little more of an interesting color for the sail. And I'll just do some upstrokes like this. And I'm going to keep this flowing with the sail, so I want to do this. So I'm going to keep my brush strokes going like so. I want to keep them inside the lines of the sail where we drew the sail in. Does that make sense? So I don't want to go outside those boundaries of the sail. I want to stay inside the sail with this little bit of a warmer kind of color like the canvas of the sail. And I think that looks pretty good. And then once that dries, we can get a little more um, details here. I see there's some uh, seams in the sail where they sew the, the, the sail together in seams. So we could add those in to the sail going across that way. And I think another thing we can do is we can add the darker dark of the boom and the mast of the sailboat, which is going to be good. And I think once we're done with that, we're going to have it. It'll be just right. Again, I'm not going too overboard with a lot of brush strokes in the water. That might just kind of cause us some problems with too many brush strokes and too much um, going on in the painting. Let's try it like this, the way we have it. Keeping it more simplified, I think that looks good. And I, I guarantee you, once we do the the wood uh, mast and the boom and some of the details on this sail, I think it's going to look fine. It's going to look really good. So let's let's see if it is going to turn out just the way we want to, with minimal details, kind of keeping it simple, keeping the water simple, and not going overboard with too many brush strokes on the water that can sometimes really cause a problem so that's why I try to maybe we'll keep this more simplistic for this painting we'll try it okay so we're gonna let this dry a little bit I'm gonna come back in about five ten minutes I'm gonna take another break and then when we come back we're gonna add some details to the sail as we see here in the photograph, the seams, as they, they take the uh, canvas and they sew it together with these seams. And so we're going to put those in, those lines. That'll make it look very interesting. And then we're going to darken up where the mast, the vertical mast here is, and then the boom over here, like so. And once we do that, we're, we'll have it all completed and looking fantastic. Okay, so we'll be right back and we'll finish up. Here we go. We are going to start doing our final details here. So we're going to go back. Let's use our Prang Oval 16 brush that comes with our set to do some of these fine details here on the uh, sailboat. So let's take a look and see what we have. Let's use maybe just some of this subtle uh, color. I'm going to get some I'll get a fresh tissue here, dry off some of that paint. Let's see if we can see if we can do this here. There we go. One, 
There's one here. And sometimes you add a little bit more of some that one there. Then this one goes all the way across to here. Like that. Then this one is here. And then here. There we go. These will dry lighter. And we have a bit of a marking there, and then another like that. And also, too, when we do these darker masts, we'll do the, we'll do them over here. We're going to use this wood color with a little bit of a darker brown. So we take that orangey color, a little bit of a darker brown, a little bit of a darker red in there, a little bit of this mixture in here to get it even darker yet. So it's a dark wood color. That looks pretty good. And I dry off a little bit on the tissue so I don't have too much on there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go a little bit at a time to get this straight. To get this straight mast here, you just go a little bit at a time. My hand's resting on the paper the whole time like this because it's all dry. All the rest of the painting is dry. I rest my hand on the paper and then I just go a little bit at a time with this mast. You fill it in a little bit at a time and you just keep moving your hand down. So you can just keep getting the straight line like so. Move the hand down, so you're just kind of doing an inch or two at a time, like this. And then, voila, you have it. There we go. And then we're going to do the boom. The boom over here is... Same thing, a little bit darker maybe I'll go. Dry off a little bit of the paint so there's not too much paint on the brush. And then we'll go across here. and we'll. Same thing here. I have my hand resting on the paper like I'm writing my name or printing something or doing some script. Same idea, hand resting on the paper. And then I just go like an inch or two at a time. And then I stop, slide my hand over a little bit and then touch down again and do another little bit like that. Like so. Perfect. And we'll go right to the end here where the boom is there. And then that looks good. Yeah, I think we could use a little more sh um, some I think I see some so I'll do some of this here where the where the sail is like this, the sail I think the sail has a little bit of a like that. So a little bit of a shadow for the sail. Uh, a reflection, I should say. Like that. Like so. And then maybe even a little bit too for the figures. Like that. The figures are a little darker, so they may be on there a little bit too. And then I just blend that in a little bit. splashing maybe all right I think this was a fun painting to do I'm hoping you enjoyed this we could add a little bit of orange to the sky maybe over here we can kind of see the orange in the sky maybe we add a little orange I wouldn't go through the sail. I would leave the sail alone and not 
run the orange through it. Maybe a little bit of that orange just in the water a little bit here, tiny bit. And I think this is really fun. If we're just starting out in watercolor, it's kind of fun to maybe do a couple little interesting um, practice um, techniques for a painting like this. We could approach this in different ways, but the glazing technique is always a great way to get your start with watercolor, practicing getting a good wash across your whole paper for your first wash, your first glazing, letting that dry 100%, and then after that we can go in and do our darks like we did. So we started doing our darks of the trees and the hills here, the distant hills, a little bit lighter, but still pretty dark, and the dark trees over here. And then we did our sail in our boat and our figures in our boat with the um, boom and the um, mast of this uh, sailboat. So I think when we do all of these things and then we put some shadowing too in here, when we do all these things in a painting like this we kind of get a real good feel for the, the whole process of doing the glazing technique and then doing the darker washes once it dries over the top. So you'll kind of get a real good feel for that. Um, so. I purposely didn't overdo anything with too many brush strokes and too many fancy things here. Just want to keep it simple so we all get the practice in on doing the really beautiful large washes across the whole paper and then of course getting in some of the darker uh, tonal values and the darker washes over top once the first wash is, is dry 100%. And so glad you're here and you're painting along with us on our Extreme Beginner series. Um, have a wonderful time painting and drawing. Enjoy the process, enjoy the journey. We'll be back soon on another uh, tutorial. Can't wait to uh, get started again on another tutorial. And um, we'll see you soon, everybody. And again, I always mention if you haven't subscribed, on the right-hand side below is the subscribe button, just in case you might have missed it earlier. Um, when you subscribe, all it does is just really notify you when you open up uh, YouTube again. The next time you go into YouTube, it'll just show you that my video, a new video, if I've created a new video, you'll see it in your YouTube channel, and that's all it is, nothing else. And, and then you can follow along and start up uh, another painting with us, okay? All right, so we'll see you soon, everybody. Happy painting.